Today we're going to build a DIY workshop that stores all of these tools in a single cart. The majority of my projects only require basic DIY and home improvement tools, so I decided to make a mini workshop that fits in one cart that holds all of these most frequently used items. This cart also serves as a small workbench, and I like that I can roll it to the side of my studio to create plenty of floor space for larger projects. The cart is made out of two by fours and three quarter inch thick plywood. I laid the plywood on top of the two by fours to create space underneath it so that my saw blade on my circular saw doesn't hit the concrete. I marked the location of my first cut and then clamped down a trim board with two squeeze clamps. This trim board will serve as a guide to ensure that I get nice straight cuts with the circular saw. Don't worry about the measurements for the cuts just yet. I'll be posting PDF plans of this project on my website as soon as possible. Using a straight edge and a circular saw is my preferred method of breaking down large sheets of plywood. And it's much cheaper and doesn't use up as much space as a table saw. I used the same technique to make my cross cuts, but instead of a long trim board, I just used a scrap piece of plywood. I need to cut some 2x4s the same length as the plywood, so I used the plywood to mark them, and I just cut these freehand following the line with my circular saw. Now you can clap down a blade for these, but I find for shortcuts, doing it by hand and just going slow and watching the line carefully works fine. After cutting all the pieces of plywood in 2x4, I use my orbital sander just to give them a quick once over. Now this is just shop furniture so it doesn't have to be perfect, so all I did was sand with 120 grit sandpaper. I'm starting the assembly by putting together the side supports for the cart. And this just involves screwing some 2x4s together and then screwing them to a piece of plywood. I used a scrap piece of plywood as a spacer to set the location for the 2x4s underneath the plywood. I built the first two side supports the same way and I used pieces of plywood or 2x4s to help make sure I'm lining up the edges nice and flush. I like building small components of a bigger project this way. It just makes it easier to set everything up in the right position without a lot of fancy corner clamps. Most of the time I'm screwing plywood to 2x4s, but there's a few parts in this build where I need to screw through plywood and into the edge of another piece of plywood. For these areas I just go a little bit slower and make sure to measure out the location of my screws because I only got 3 quarters of an inch of thickness to hit. This piece of plywood is going to serve as a shelf that separates the space between my angle grinder and my orbital sander. It's plenty strong as it is with the plywood to plywood connections, but I added in another short piece of 2x4 just to reinforce it. In addition to using the front and back for storage, I'm also going to use the sides for storage. And on one of the sides, I screwed in some 5 inch wide pieces of plywood to some 2x4s of the same length. I then used a scrap piece of 2x4 as a spacer and screwed these pieces to one of the plywood side pieces. I screwed the piece of plywood that will serve as the bench top to the side supports that go directly underneath it. Most of these screws are going directly into 2x4s, but for the ones that are going into the edges of another piece of plywood, I pre-drilled some holes just to keep the plywood from splitting. I then flipped it over and screwed on the middle shelf. Rough construction materials like this aren't always perfectly straight, so sometimes you gotta use a little bit of force to kind of push them into position. The lower side supports have two by fours at the top. Now the reason why I did this was so that I could screw through the middle shelf and into the meat of those two by fours. For most of the connections, I'm using either one and a quarter inch long or two inch long finished screws. But when I'm going through plywood two by fours and into another two by fours, I'm using three inch long screws. I flipped the cart upside down and then screwed on the bottom plywood panel. All the wood for this project is pretty inexpensive. I just use basic sanded pine plywood, which is about $32 a sheet. I used one and a half sheets of it and about three to four two by fours. Now, one of the areas where I didn't go cheap was on casters. I got some nice heavy duty casters from Home Depot that have locking brakes on them. And I just screwed these to the underside of the bottom piece of plywood. The basic structure of the cart is done, but this is the fun part. 
I get to figure out how to use all these little nooks and crannies in the structure of the cart to store the tools that I want to be the most visible and the most accessible. Now I don't need every single screwdriver I have to be out and in the open, but it is nice to have two basic sizes on hand at the ready. I use a utility knife often and it's really important to have nice sharp blades. So I actually screwed a blade dispenser that's also a disposal receptacle to the cart itself and then hung the knife right above it. I added in a dedicated shelf to drill in driver bits and then added a pair of Phillips head screwdrivers and a crescent wrench to the other side of the front. Now for some often used tools like these adjustable head pliers, I just had to drive in a single screw. I'm going to use the 5 inch deep side shelves to hold wood glue and wood finishes. So I had to notch out a piece of plywood to go around a 2x4 support to make a second shelf for my wood finishes. Right beneath the finishes I'm going to store some shop rags and foam and bristle brushes. A circular saw doesn't sit that nicely on a flat shelf, so I screwed together some 2x4s and then screwed them to the inside of one of the side panels to make a stand for the saw. I then screwed some small pieces of plywood together to make racks that are going to hold my speed squares, which I use all the time, and to make some additional shelves to hold tackle boxes that will hold miscellaneous hardware, extra jigsaw blades, and extra driver bits. Now I've been doing this a long time so I have a pretty good sense of what tools I use the most often, but if you're relatively new to DIYing, I suggest leaving a little bit of extra room so that your tool collection has some space to grow into. I had some leftover small pieces so I made hooks that'll hold these two heavy duty folding steel sawhorses. These sawhorses not only fold up nice and small, they also have adjustable legs so I can set them to the same height as my work cart. Now every maker will tell you that you can never have too many clamps, so I screwed in these steel hooks that I got from Home Depot to hold two long 48 inch T-bar clamps from Maker Brand. These are super heavy duty clamps that are strong enough to do a pull up on and they have a ton of travel in the screw threads. So my favorite power tools and my most commonly used hand tools are in the front. I have drill bits, driver bits, sandpaper, and discs for my angle grinders on one side, clamps, saw horses, and hardware on the back, and finishing and cleanup materials on the other side. I'll put links to all of my favorite tools in the description box below. I drilled some additional holes to hold bit holders, drove in some screws to keep some pencils and sharpies organized, and added a hook for my safety glasses. One of my favorite features though is the utility blade dispenser with the hook for the knife right above it. If you're a fan of this channel you know how often I use squeezy clamps and I put plenty of storage right underneath the angle grinder and sandpaper. I'm really excited about having a handy place to store clean shop rags along with both water-based and oil-based wood finishes. To access a couple of the storage spaces you have to move an additional item. So I tried to put things that I don't use as often here. Now I'm not worried about shop furniture getting some abuse and looking a little bit nicked up over time. But if you wanted to protect it, I would recommend using Verithane water-based polyurethane. Now I do want to protect the top, so I screwed down a 2 foot by 4 foot piece of melamine just to create a temporary work surface that I can be really hard on and that's super easy to replace once it gets too beaten up. Alright, now, so what can you build with all the tools on this cart? I would argue just about all of the furniture in your home. Now in the past we've done a whole bunch of three tool projects that just use a circular saw, orbital sander, and drill or driver. When you add in the jigsaw you can do a little bit more of curvy cuts and it gives you a little more uh, possibilities with geometry and when you add the angle grinder not only does that open you up to metal work, you can now do power carving as well. So I think this is a really good basic set to start off with. And we have a whole bunch of projects that meet that description already. I'll put a link to a playlist that has all of them in the description box of this video. We'll also be adding new projects that can be built entirely with the stuff on this cart. So 
Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Ryobi for sponsoring this project and actually for being my longest sponsor. They were the first company that reached out to me and I've been working with them ever since. They're absolutely fantastic tools for the price and I really think they have the best value. So check them out and until uh, next time, oh, make sure you subscribe too if you haven't already. Okay, thanks, bye.